Hi there. In this tutorial, we'll be learning about the difference between real interest rates and nominal interest rates. And we will also find out how they are related to one another through the rate of inflation. And ultimately, our discussion will be uh, focusing on uh, individuals' purchasing power as well. Okay, so I would like to motivate this tutorial with a simple example. So let's suppose that you got $10,000 of savings today. Savings today, okay? And let's say there is a basket of consumption goods worth 2000 This can include many things like food items, maybe clothing, um, things like maybe travel expenses, right? technology, right? uh, mobile phones, etc., laptops, your utilities, anything you need in your daily lives, right? So, and this is probably not maybe everything that you'll consume, but let's say a standard basket of uh, consumption goods. Now, if you have savings of 10,000 today, and if this basket costs 2,000 today, you can purchase five baskets such as these, right? So that's your purchasing power today. You can afford five uh, baskets of these items. Right. Now, let's suppose that the bank allows you to uh, invest your money or deposit your money um, at a rate of, oops, sorry. Yeah, the bank allows you to deposit your money at a rate of 20% per year. Now, once the year passes, your savings will grow to 12,000. Okay. It looks like a decent amount of return. Now, if the price of the consumption basket stays the same, your purchasing power has increased, right? Because at 12,000, you can now afford actually six of these baskets, right? At the moment, you could afford five, but next year, if the prices stay the same, you can get six. So your purchasing power has actually increased. But it is quite possible that the prices of these, the stuff in your basket will increase as well. And that's when inflation comes into play, right? So inflation means the increase in prices over time. So if, for example, uh, the prices increase to 2,400 for the same basket of goods, so you can again afford five uh, of these baskets. So your purchasing power, in this case, stayed the same compared to now, right? So it hasn't really changed, okay? Or maybe the prices can increase even further. So maybe the cost of these items will increase to 3,000 pounds, right? And in that case, you could only now afford four of these baskets. So your purchasing power has actually declined, right? So the 20% that we see here really doesn't account for the inflation and the change in your purchasing power. So this 20% return is what we call the nominal interest rate. But most often we would like to know about the real rate of return or the real interest rates. Okay? And that essentially takes into account this inflation and the change in the purchasing power. Okay? So how do we take that into account? So what sort of calculation we need to make? The uh, calculation is actually very, very, very simple. So I'm going to clear all these uh, drawings and uh, show you the equation here. So we have an equation called the Fisher equation, which is due to the American economist Irwin Fisher. So essentially, the equation says that 1 plus the nominal rate, so the nominal interest rate, will be equal to 1 plus the real rate. So this is the one that takes into account inflation times one plus the rate of inflation. Okay, so this is the Fisher equation. Now, in our example, the nominal rate of return was 20%. Okay, 
And let's suppose the rate of inflation is 10%. Okay. So what would be the real rate of return in this scenario? Okay. So this means that the basket was originally worth 2000. Now the, the value has increased to 2200, a 10% change in value. So I can solve for uh, the real rate of return as follows. So on the left-hand side, essentially, I've got 1.2 equals 1 plus the real rate, unknown in my equation, times 1 plus 1. So essentially, the real rate of return is 1.2, so the one over here. So I move this one to the left-hand side by dividing. So 1 plus 2 over 1 plus 1 and subtracted this one okay and if you calculate this so this will be 9.1 percent okay so although the bank offers me a nominal interest rate of 20 percent because of the 10 percent inflation rate my real rate of return that takes into account inflation is only 9.1 percent so it, it this shows clearly the importance of taking into taking inflation into account when making a return calculations. So in countries where the inflation rate is low, this is less of an issue. So typically countries like US, UK manage to maintain low levels of inflation, although not all the time, right? There are periods when actually the inflation starts to creep up and central banks need to take action, action right? Uh, so in those scenarios, you, you definitely need to make a comparison with your nominal rate and real rate of return. And in some other countries, they actually experience, experience very high levels of inflation. So it's really critical for investors there to understand uh, the difference between the nominal rate of return and real rate of return. So when inflation is high, essentially your real rate of return will be much, much smaller than the nominal rate. Uh, rate of return. Okay. There's one more thing I would like to emphasize here. So there's actually a shortcut to, to this formula, which works especially when the rate of inflation and the nominal rates are low. So I just want to wrap up by showing that. And uh, essentially, the approximate formula is like this. So nominal interest rate is a proxy approximately equal to the real interest rate plus the rate of inflation, right? So in our example, the nominal rate was 20%, right? And the inflation was 10%. So if we just use this approximation, this means that the real rate is 10%. And we had uh, exactly calculated it as 9.1%, right? So there is a bit of difference because, like I said, this is an approximation. If the inflation rate was lower, the, the difference between this approximate solution and the exact solution uh, would be much smaller as well, right? So this approximate equation works particularly well when the inflation rate is small. So when you want to make back-of-the-envelope calculations, this is what you can uh, rely on. Okay, this is all, all I would like to cover in this uh, tutorial. On our website, we have a detailed uh, lesson on the difference between nominal rates and real rates of return as well. So if you're interested in, uh, you can find the link to that in the video description. Hope you enjoyed the video and looking forward to see you in the next one. Bye for now.